All right, so Kendra, this is our opportunity now. So we we know you're a doctor. You've done a ton of work in the, in the medical field. You've probably, I can imagine, helped tons of kids. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. Yeah, you you <laughs> probably you probably doing legendary numbers uh, in in regards to that. But let me ask you about some of your other passions. So earlier in the conversation, you said you play piano. Mm-hmm. I do. Are you classically trained? Yes, but I also used to play for church growing okay. up. I think that kept me out of trouble because I was, you know, talking okay. during the sermons and whatnot. And so my mom had me start playing for the choir. Ah, okay. So did your mom used to pinch you a little bit? Like, she didn't. She just gave me a look because she also was the head musician at church too. So uh, Okay. And she would look up over the piano and I'm like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. See, she never all, had to pinch me. I think... All of our moms have that look, and it's just like <laughs> sharp. It feels like somebody's cutting you when she looks at yes. you. She's like, <laughs> you know, that's it. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's it. It's gonna be problems. Okay. Um, so you're a pianist. What else are you passionate about? I'm passionate about reading. Okay. Oh, that's a great segue. Mm -hmm. I heard you wrote some books. <laughs> that's I did. What I, heard. I mean. <laughs> Yep. A Violin in the Shed by Dr. Kendra Hamm. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about where, um, excuse me, <clears throat> where you felt started writing. Did you start did you start writing early? Was it something that you picked up and say, hey, I have a story to tell? Where where did that formulate? Well, it's interesting because I used to write stories, like short stories when I was younger in elementary school just for fun. Mm -hmm. And I would illustrate them. So you can draw as well? I can draw, but it would take me way too long to do the illustrations all that right, you see right. in these books. Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. So did you have any influences? Did where you just said you love to read? Mm -hmm. Did you have any men or women in particular that anytime you saw one of their books, you had to have it? Did you have any influences like that? I did. So the Magic School Bus series. Oh yeah. Was Absolutely one of my favorites. Shout out to Miss Frizzle. I know. <laughs> I really wanted to be in her class. Me and too. then the Babysitter's Club books as well. I had all of them. Okay. In fact, my mom actually complained and said she was going to stop buying them and I need to go to the library because she was spending too much money on books that I would read in two hours. Oh, so you're a speed reader? I was a speed reader. So I like to make a confession, <laughs> uh, Kendra. I love reading books, but I have a problem I wouldn't call it a problem, but I have an issue. If if I see something that's really just just amazing, I read it like ten times. So what really? happens? Yeah, yeah. I always go back. I never go back. Yeah. I read it the one time and I'm done. Yeah, like when it when when there's something that's really powerful, I I, I have a tendency to always go back. Hmm. And I'm terrible with books because I write in the margins. Oh no! So I learned that in college. Oh, oh, that would drive me crazy. Yeah, like no. if it's yeah. So I like if it's like a quote that I really like. I'm not. I'm not gonna remember. Oh, on page seventy three, <laughs> paragraph four, he or she said, "Nope." So I was like, "Duke." So yeah. Um, so I can't ever lend you a book because you'll write in the margins. Yeah, I just send it to me on my phone. Oh no! Yeah, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> yeah, get you I a new one. I can't mark it on the phone. I can <laughs> screenshot it on the phone. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, the, the crazy that's that's funny. My mom was actually a speed reader as well. So she'd be like, uh, you know, before bed or whatever, she would um, say, "Oh, I just got this new book," and then I come in the room the next day, and then she would be reading another one, and I would say, "Oh, you're gonna read two at the same time?" She's like, "No, no, I finished that one. You finished the whole <laughs> a whole book." So I didn't get that gene, uh, unfortunately. So. It's, it's one thing to have a passion about reading and writing. At what point did you did you say, I'm going to actively put one foot in front of the other and I'm going to I'm going to do this? Well, I never considered myself to be a writer, even though I enjoyed writing. I went probably from middle school until the end of residency without writing another story at okay. all. Um, so I was at the end of my pediatric residency 
getting a routine oil change from my old Explorer that I have since gotten rid of. Yes, Max, I had it for too long. (laughs) But I was sitting there and I was thinking about a lot of my patients coming into the office, being afraid of being there, being afraid of getting shots, what's going to happen. And so I wanted to write this series that made children not so afraid of going to the doctor. Yeah. Um, so they could learn about different illnesses and things like that. So they wouldn't be as scared okay. and kind of know what to expect when they go in there. Yeah. I mean, for me, your book is actually for me because I still hate getting shots and uh, I'm approaching 40 in a couple in some years. <laughs> like I've pat I can I can make this admission. Um, I've passed out from getting. So you're vaccinated. one of those. <laughs> it's bad. You have to make sure you're sitting with your back against a chair. Especially, and make sure you tell them when you go in there that you pass out. Listen, they they bring out crackers. Well, not so much now, but <laughs> at one point in time when I had, you know, they used to have, hell, you coming to get your shot? Okay. They put the crackers down, a little mini bottle of water. And they oh, say, no. Are you ready? <laughs> and I'm the opposite. They do it, and I'm thinking, when are you going to do the shot, or can we get this done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we're already done. We have a Band-Aid. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, Especially drawing blood. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, it ain't bad. That's that's a good <laughs> way to give me a nap. Because <laughs> as soon as I feel it coming, I was like, oh. I'm oh, good. no. <laughs> we, we, we really doing this? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> it's so bad. No, but so you so you used uh, real life anecdotes mm-hmm. to put together your book. Yes. What what's the process like of writing a book? Because yeah. I have I can I want to write a book about the couch summer vacation. Mm-hmm. How do I get a book published? Well, first you have to write it. So. Okay. Um, a good I actually started with just titles. I just started thinking about like, oh, I want to write about this. I want to write about that. Mm-hmm. And during this 30 t- minute to one hour oil change, I had 15 different titles that I wanted to write. Okay. And so then I decided which one I wanted to write first. Okay. And which one was the first one? Technically, I wrote this Bell's Policy one first. Okay. In 2013. Didn't publish it until last year. You just had it. In just your had it in my pocket. Okay. Um, but that one is actually technically based on a true story because my brother suffered from that when we were younger. Right. And I remember being terrified because I didn't know what was going on with him. So he used to do these funny facial expressions and he would like puff his cheeks out. And then one day only one of his cheeks would puff out and he could only move one side of his face. And I thought he was playing. Right. Because he used to joke around a lot. Mm-hmm. And then when I realized my parents were getting serious about it and we're also scared yeah um then i knew he wasn't joking anymore so is so i've 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 seen people with with that right Mm -hmm. there's a a rapper out right now he he has that condition is there a way to reverse the condition is there a way to just take try to help the the symptoms like how, how does how does it work yeah, most of the patients actually get better on their own just with time. Okay. Sometimes it is permanent. That's kind of the worst case scenario. Okay. Um, but his got better. He got put on some steroids. Not sure if the steroids really helped or not. Um, but then he got better after a few weeks, and all of a sudden his face was moving normally when he woke up one morning. Wow. Okay. Shut and up. he was surprised I remembered that, but I remember it because I was so terrified. Yeah, I didn't understand yeah. why his face wasn't working. Mm-hmm. And I mean, now, uh, is that, is it your little brother? Mm hmm. Little yeah. brother who's 35. How old is he? 35. Shout out, little 34. bro. 34. <laughs> see you. So, so your brother was actually the inspiration behind the book. Of course, like that's. So for me, um, I, I know I have a friend of mine who wrote a book. What do you have to find an agent? How do you, how do you know what? publishing house to go to like right. what, what's the process did someone tell you hey Kendra I know this person person here 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 like or did you have to do all of that work on your own it took me a while to figure it out so I started writing in 2013 but it wasn't till 2016 that I talked to another lady who had also published a book and she self-published okay so you can go the traditional publishing route where you you know shop your book around to agents and mm-hmm. publishing companies 
which can take years to do, or you can self-publish yeah. and essentially just pay everything out of pocket up front. All right, all right. So what, what, at what point, so talk to me about, so you've written the book, you've, you've done uh, the research, you know how you're going to release it, how you're going to publish it. Tell me about actually going out and promoting the book. Was it was it stressful because it I mean, was you stressful. still you still have a job? Now. I still had a full time job, and at that time, I was still on call two weeks out of the month. Mm-hmm. So any of my free time, I was trying to promote the book on social media. And if anybody follows me on social media, you know I don't post that often, so that's very difficult for me. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll have her information in the comment <laughs> section, and maybe I'll post something by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay, so was that? Was, was that uncomfortable for it you? It was very uncomfortable. Like actually jumping out in front and saying, Yes. Hi, I'm Kendra. Yes, because I don't yeah. like talking about myself or anything that I've done. You have to ask me questions for me to talk about it. Okay. That's why a lot of people don't know what I've done, because I'm not going to talk about it unless you ask me a question. I'm glad I got the questions, y'all. <laughs> I got some. Yeah, so, I, so for me, I... Um, I had to go through this with this podcast situation. So I got the motivation to do it. I got the idea. I, I put in the work to get the ball rolling. But it was difficult for me to jump out and say, hey, I'm here. Because yes. for me, uh, I like to play the background. I don't, you know, I'm not a hey, look at me type of person. Mm-hmm. But in order to follow through with the mission statement, <laughs> You have to post online and say, yes. hey, look at me. Yeah. Hey, hey, we're on summer vacation and we got a production <laughs> like we are, I have, yeah, I have to do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's it's uncomfortable. I, w- I will admit. Yes. So I actually hired a writing uh, an author coach, not a writing coach, but an author mm-hmm. coach. And she coached me through the whole process of mm-hmm. working with the illustrator and the publishing company that helps you self-publish your book. Um. And she would send me these texts and say, Kendra, you haven't posted today. You haven't posted this week. And I'm thinking, I know because I don't want to. <laughs> I, don't feel like I want it. somebody else to do this for yeah. me. <laughs> it's yeah. very strange. But also, I think it would be difficult because because I'm right now, it's the early stages of my podcast and I'm doing a lot of this stuff myself. So even in the midst of everything that we're doing right now, like I'm on, on my phone, like, how can I think <laughs> of some cool con- think of some cool content, right? So I can yes. but but the issue Sometimes the issue is if you were to hire someone to do that for you, do they really understand your voice? Right. Do they really understand your approach to content? Mm-hmm. Like there has to there has to be a long conversation that takes place in time. Yes. So for me to pass off that uh, responsibility, it would be like, let me see some let me see some of your work. Let me see your page. Right. I think <laughs> like, people would know immediately that it's not me posting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we can come together and talk about how hard it is to be a content creator and all this crap i don't i mean i don't know if people just don't work all day and that's how they come up with content <laughs> but i don't have it in me at the end of the day i really don't you don't want to be an influencer no i don't want to be an influencer <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i can do it oh uh, yeah after i've had screaming kids all day parents upset because Department of Social Services has come and taken their child, and yet I'm supposed oh. to come home and try to figure out how can I make my book sound interesting today that's now been out for two years. Yeah, you can be on TikTok like this after, <laughs> <laughs> after work. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, like you said, you're doing something amazing. Um, your, your books are important. Like Even my, my two ch- children, when they saw the books, their eyes lit up like, <laughs> wow, what's that? <laughs> yeah, so you're doing some really great work, and, you know, I think – Everyone who knows you can appreciate the fact that you're willing to be uncomfortable to finish out the mission. Yes. And I think when again, it goes back to the discipline, right? You you understand discipline, and you understand that you know I'm I'm going to be uncomfortable, but we're, mm-hmm. this is what we're doing. Yeah. So Kendra, tell me something else that you do. I mean, you 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 wear many hats. Hmm. I actually got promoted during. COVID and wasn't planning on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you do some speaking engagements at times, right? I do, yeah. Tell me about that. 
And it's interesting that I never thought that I'd be okay with public speaking because I was so shy. Yeah. And I just knew as a child I would never be able to get up in front of a crowd and talk. But now I do it all the time because I have to teach medical students. I have to teach residents. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly giving lectures and doing education. What's the what's the what's your process in terms of preparing for something like that? Because you're a mm -hmm. naturally shy person. What's your process when you know, OK, I'm speaking to 300 people today mm -hmm. at whatever time about this or that? What's your process being a would you would you call yourself an introvert? Yes. OK. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. So you're an introvert. Tell me about your process in approaching a public speaking engagement. For me, I just think about how important whatever that topic is mm -hmm. for everybody to learn. And I kind of get myself excited about it. So as, as long as I can teach at least one person in the audience and see that person like taking it in, that yeah. makes me feel better about speaking. Yeah, I mean, so I have not spoken in a large group of people. Uh, I graduated in, I, I, I have a mass communications degree, but. But I, you haven't done that? I have not spoken oh, in wow. front of a large group of people. Okay. However, I have played basketball in very in front of very large crowds. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I, I tend to uh, understand that the main thing is the main thing. Mm -hmm. You worry about that, and it's cool. Also, yes. preparation as well. I think that's important. If you're prepared, right. then it's second nature. You know, so that that's kind of my approach. But it's really interesting to hear your perspective on it because even though I graduated in this field, it's, it's you still have to go out and you still have you, to do it. You, you, it's, it's you, like yes. everyone, everyone's sitting there looking at you like this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, yeah, talk to us, and then you, yeah. you know, if you freeze up, that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let, let's 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 see what we have. So. You're a doctor, author, public speaker, wife, mm -hmm. daughter. Uh, we can go down the <laughs> list. Um, can you tell me what? Tell me what's next. Are we gonna get a third book soon? Are we gonna get another promotion? Like, tell me what's next. I would love another promotion. You hear uh, that, boss? Right. <laughs> 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 um, so actually, last year I got promoted, and now I am the medical director of four different clinics. And so we cover nine counties worth of children. So it's very busy. Hey, I'm sorry to cut you off, but talk that talk, Kendra. Keep going. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm really considering more of an administrative role, so, you know, the hospital CEO kind of thing mm -hmm. instead of just seeing patients all the time. I really enjoy looking at processes and making things better in the clinics and hospital setting. Okay. It's <laughs> very different than what I went to school for, but it's still involving patient care, and it's really important. Yeah. You, you know why that's important, Kendra? See, she is big talk. I, I told y'all <laughs> we got a big guest on today. So the reason why, you know, I like to uh, ask people what's next uh, is because I'm big on manifestation. Like, I, I feel like there's a ton of power in it. So you can believe what you want, but I feel like when you actively step forward and put it into existence and say, I'm going to be successful, this is my goal for the week, this or that. You know, some people have vision boards. Yep. When, when you write it, when you when you say it, I, I feel like there's a ton of power in it. Um, so I want to ask you, to manifest your perfect scenario. So that could be personal, professional, or both. What is wh what is the perfect scenario for Dr. Kendra Ham on this round planet? It is round. <laughs> In case people didn't know, it is definitely round. I um, hope y'all don't kill the comment section <laughs> no. on my flat oh, people. It's, it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. Perfect scenario, mm -hmm. student loans are paid off. Ooh. Completely paid off. Hello. Now, like today, like yesterday. Man. They're throwing in the side, aren't they? It's really annoying. 
<sighs> and I'm one of those people, yes, I've been paying while it's been 0% interest because I needed that yeah. principle to come down. Yeah, 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 right, 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 right. Because people don't talk about how expensive med school is. Yeah. And I definitely had classmates who their parents or spouses wrote checks every semester for med school. And here I am just taking out more and more loans just so I can be there. Can I tell you a crappy story about student loans? Sure. So my mom passed in 2013. I don't want to bring the mood down. That's the only way she got out of those student loans. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, she, no. She, had to, she had to get out of here. So, yeah. F- fortunately, I was able to get a college scholarship. So that helped me start a little bit earlier. But I can imagine, mm-hmm. you know, had I gone to walk on at another school right. and I had to pay that 30000 and then, you know, you do that for four years. Exactly. Yeah, I and can then, only imagine what that feels like. And they tell you, oh, you don't. You can just defer it during residency. You don't have to pay on it. I should have been paying on it. They yeah. told me I, I would be just fine. And then, you know, that interest just keeps accruing, and they don't tell you about that part. You see, the thing is, when you get a real job, it's like, yay, I have money. And then they come knocking. It's all you remember coming, that deferment? <laughs> it's all coming out. <laughs> remember I need, that? I need that remember those player. three years you didn't pay anything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah give, me, give me that. Give me that player. I need that money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, student so, loans, yes. what, what else would, what else could, could the, the perfect scenario be for you? I want more time to be able to write and focus on the books. Mm. Ultimate goal is book deal. Because I, you know, with me marketing my own books, I'm not reaching the number of people and number of kids I would like to. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a book deal in the process. So it actually gets distributed everywhere. It's actually physically in bookstores, not just on Amazon or, you know, online and Barnes and Noble. Okay. Student loan, books, I'm I'm prying right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anything else you want to add? There are a few other things. We here. So I used to say I wanted to retire by 40. You That's know. not going to happen. I, okay. I, you missed the mark? I missed the mark. Okay. I run out of time. You say 45. We put it back <laughs> 45. I yeah. could be okay with 45. All right. I would love to have some kids. I thought I would have had kids by now. I'm, I'm I did gonna... just get married two weeks ago. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to look in the crowd, but it's <laughs> some... There's someone in the room that could help you. Uh, there is somebody that can help me with that. I, I know somebody that can help you, Kendra. I'm, I'm not in your business, but <laughs> I know somebody. <laughs> so little ones. Uh, also, can I manifest something for you? A yeah. workshop uh, garage at the house. Uh, that would be awesome. I, I mean, I don't know if you would use that uh, to fix cars and I personally stuff, would not use I know it, but I know somebody well. that would. Yeah. Okay, okay. We know we know that same yeah. person. I yeah. Think. yeah. I'd okay. be totally fine with that. It's manifest. Back in the you know on the twentieth acre of the land. Yes. Yeah. All right. He'll have to take a four wheeler <laughs> to get yes, there. Yes, right? that's fine. Just Ooh. wear a helmet. I'm coming over to the house. Just ride a four wheeler. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so Kendra, listen, we're we're wrapping up. Um, I don't want to hold you all day because um, I'm sure you want to get some fish or something. I would love some because somebody doesn't know how to make fish shots it's fired nothing y'all but, it's nothing but red meat and pork and no all vest- the stuff no, that i didn't eat for 14 years no, until we started dating no vegetables there's no vegetables anywhere you, in the house all right so we about to go on a tangent y'all we about to, <laughs> <laughs> let, let's, let's talk about it kendra so kendra you know why before i even met you um you know why i knew you you were the shiznit why because you got a person that we know to eat vegetables <laughs> and i and and you gave him a glow so we talked a little bit about relationships and stuff and i, I have the same thing with with my wife um I, I think i'm a pretty good dude alone but with her i feel like a superhero and i'm sure i don't know i know that you do the same thing. So, like I said, before I ever met you, before I ever saw you in real life, I was like, yeah, you know, you, you, you one of those. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think we, we, we gonna wrap up y'all. All right. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, Kendra, thank you. Uh, 
we have some water in our cups. Uh, cheers to summer vacation. Cheers, cheers to you. Cheers to the book. Go get the book. Go get the book. <laughs> Check them out. Also, I don't. I don't even want to. You know, do you want people to follow you? They can follow me, but I'm not going to promise that I'm posting something every week or every month. You, I will she, let you know if something big happens. She'll be present, y'all. I will be present. If you send me a message, I will respond, unless you're asking for a medical advice, and then I will refer you to your primary care provider. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> they, I, I don't know if they learned that in medical school, y'all. That was so... That was clean, Kendra. <laughs> uh, but, but listen, Kendra, thank you for your time. Thank you for being a part of this event coming up to you know to the house and hanging out with us you have a very awesome story um thank you for letting me use my good knees at your wedding (laughs) i can't wait to see the pictures of me doing the butt oh they're Uh, great my wife has an embarrassing picture Uh, (laughs) we can show you later but thank you and ladies and gentlemen you know how we you know how we got to give it up you know i have to drop that jewel it costs nothing to be good to someone be good to someone today. I'm Rob Fields. She's Dr. Kendra Ham. Capital D R. <laughs> and we're on summer vacation. Peace. <laughs>